Uh, so first up on the quick hits, uh, this one is quite a doozy um, because a very prominent person over at EA has left another one. Um, so this is Jade Raymond, and she became the head of um, EA Motive. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, EA Motive, that studio, they were the ones that um, everybody has pretty much been rolled in. Rolled into, uh, right, right. Rolled for in. lack of a better uh, term. And what was the um, other studio? Uh, what's it called? Wasn't it? Um, oh God, the, the team that did Mass Effect. They were they were rolled into EA Motive. Yeah, EA Mon was it EA Montreal? Montreal, I think it was. Was yeah. it Montreal or Motive? Yeah. I don't think it was Motive. Yeah, EA Montreal. Okay. Sure. Um, and so so basically, if your team was doing bad, they pretty much got rolled into into this team. Oh. Um, and the head of this team, uh, she she left. Right. Uh, well, she she quite wasn't the head anymore. They had moved, uh, I guess, uh, Samantha Ryan to the head of the studio. Well, she was the founder, though. Yeah, she was the founder of Moto. So uh, she yeah. worked for Ubisoft for a while, and uh, she left Ubisoft and founded Moto. Yeah. And then EA bought. She she founded Moto in fifteen two thousand fifteen. Right. And EA right. Bought them. And uh, apparently, EA after they shut down Visceral Studios and. They moved that Star Wars project into Motive. They did a um, there you go. They did a reshuffle, and uh, they put Samantha Ryan as the head of the studio. And Miss Miss Raymond decided that she no longer wanted to work for EA. Yeah, so it's just just another one of those prominent EA figures, uh, you know, just being. You know, forced out of the out of the door for uh was this a was this a forced out of the door situation? Was I don't this think just it a, was I don't want to work for you guys. Well, Joe means me, uh, she from, she founded the studio and then EA just put somebody else in well, the in the head position. Right, but I, I don't think it's a force out. It seems to me that she may have been unhappy because she wasn't okay. able to <laughs> see you know, she wasn't be able be, being able um to act on her vision. Yeah. You know, EA had their hands in way too much. And way too many things, and she wasn't able to work the way she wanted to work. I, I think it's less the fact that um, Samantha Ryan was was put to head, and more the fact that she wasn't able to make the games or do the do the projects the way she wanted to do them. Yeah, that's the thing about big publishers. A lot of a lot of game don't get uh, sour on the fact they you lose a lot of creative freedom. Right, like a like a big name publisher like EA, like uh, Activision, stuff like that. Yeah. There's, there's very few big publishers that will give freedom and there's like a bigger discussion to be had there about mm -hmm. like how a lot of game developers are, are sort of shying away from that that triple a space uh and staying in like a like a like a, like a mid-range like a double a kind of area like a a good moderate sized battery area yeah <laughs> like where, where you can make like games that are not like so big that your life depends on like them making like bajillions of dollars and just release something that that's Turns out a moderate profit, but you have full creative freedom on. Right. right. And, 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 um, and because when I saw the story and I saw that they put somebody in the head, I thought the same thing you did. But I, I read about, mm, I don't know, five or six articles. And it just seems to me that it was it was more the fact that she didn't have the creative control she wanted. And I think it may it may have been um, EA placing of... Ryan as the head. They may have seen this coming. Yeah. And that's why that's why they, they did what they did. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Oh, you know, she tells she's not happy. Hey, Phase her out, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's demote well, her. We don't want you. And, and that's and that's well, what I like and that's that's what I meant by being forced out. You know, because yeah. Kojima yeah, wasn't you. forced out, but the, you know, he definitely quit as soon as he got the chance. You know, right? Have a question. Oh, I, I I thought they just kicked him to the curb, didn't they? Well, they they they, they, they cut off all of his like. Funny. Assets like he they didn't even have telephones. yeah like it was like yeah you know, yeah yeah for for American standards it would be yeah. the same thing but like for it, like Japanese standards it was like get out get out is what they did right. you well, know? yeah, like, well, yeah. So Japanese people just very like you know etiquette about it you know yeah they want you they want you to quit so they they make it easy for you to make that decision for yourself yeah gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and I think that's that that could be the uh, the thing that happened here it's we won't possible. know until we get yeah, it's uh, all speculation yeah we but... won't know exactly what happens until somebody speaks up about it. Uh, I I do think that you know, especially in this day and age, where you know companies are definitely being called out for their behavior. 
uh, especially uh, with the treatment of their employees. Uh, we may hear something about this um, pretty Down soon. Yeah. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to, to, to hear the exact reasons why she left. And um, even to, you know, hear some of the projects that she wanted to do that never got a chance. It'll, it'll be interesting exactly. to hear that. I always find um, entertainment, like, knowing about what could have been, you know? Let me go ahead and give a quick, like, preemptive shout-out to uh, Super Bunny Hop, who's probably going to come, probably out, gonna come, come out with this. a video on this. Yo. An anonymous source tells me that Jade Raymond hated EA. <laughs> <laughs> An anonymous wink, source wink. Yeah, Super Bunny Hop is dope, yo. If you haven't ever checked him out, definitely check. He does not need a shout out from us, but I, I just I, I'm pretty I love sure his channel. I we love will his see channel. something like that regarding this. But yeah, yeah. but yeah. So um, we'll see what happens on here. Of course, if there's any updates to the story, we'll let you guys know. Uh, but that's our opinion, and we would like to know yours. So definitely leave your comments down below. Um, moving on to the next story, uh, we got Shadow of the Tomb Raider in the news for some very <laughs> bizarre reasons. Um, so. The game just recently came out. It's not even... Six weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. It's not even, uh, you know, only a couple months old at mm -hmm. this point. Not even two months old. Right. Um, but it's being review bombed and not because the game is bad. Um, no. the, re the reason people are going on, and this is only on Steam, uh, mind you. Right now. Um, and because... Some Reddit forms and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's because the game actually went on sale uh, very soon. And it was a, it was a, signif a significant sale. Yeah, it was the 30, 34% off the regular um, edition and 47% off the um, yeah, large Damn Croft near edition. half off for the yeah. for the Croft edition of uh, Tomb Raider very, very soon mm -hmm. after it was released. And we talked about this in a previous um, long form yeah, about kind of like, like buyer's remorse or like... Right. Uh, uh, what was the, the term? early adoption tax? Early adoption, early tax. adoption tax. There you go. Damn, I'm never watching the podcast. I'm, 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 I'm always here in spirit, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we talked about that, and a lot of people must have been, uh, you know, feeling the heat when they just bought a brand new game at full price, and then it goes on sale for thirty to forty seven percent off. That's that so, is crazy. I, I know exactly what happened here, and it, I, I guarantee you they didn't plan to do this ahead of time. This is all just a matter of season. Mm -hmm. Fall season is yep. the hottest season for game release. Broke broke timber. And Tomb Raider came <laughs> broke tober <laughs> at a really bad. Right, like this 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 time is so packed full of of like heavy releases that some mm -hmm. people aren't even don't even have the time and money to play Red Dead Two. Like you, yeah, you I don't... you you've got games in the backlog that you're waiting to buy. I have and Red yeah. Dead isn't even the first in that list. Yeah, yeah, I have I have backlog games that I haven't even bought yet. <laughs> yeah, like right. it, Soul Calibur. Uh, Red Dead, Red Dead, uh, 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 like Laura Croft and Tomb Raiders, like yeah, kind of I, 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 Assassin's I wanted that Creed. One. Well, I'm playing Assassin's. I'm yeah, playing. like like there's too so, many. There's so yeah. many releases coming out right and now. I I think I, I think you're 100 percent right, my love. Especially like w when they have these huge ones, Red Dead, um, the Call of Duty that just came out. Yep. Um, the Battlefield yeah. that's going to be coming out. I mean, there's a you got a Super um Super Smash coming out. I mean, there's yep. some huge huge titles coming out that's vying for a lot of people's right. attention. I guarantee you that they released this game and it was like the reception was like why are why are sales so low like nobody like anticipated this either they right. wanted to release it sooner and they got pushed back to this terrible time or like uh, I think or Shadow of the Tomb Raider was was pushed back I think it, it was, was delayed that's what, that's was part of the back. reason that's part yeah. of the reason why fall gets so packed a lot of people plan for a summer release that gets pushed back to fall and where people are already planning fall releases. <laughs> yeah, people plan, like a lot of the big titles are planned for fall because of the holidays. I think yes. September, to be quite honest, is no man's land for a AAA title. I think that's a horrible time to release because it's, it's too close to the beginning of school. So all the kids that would normally buy it like for the summer, that out of school, they're in school, so they don't have time. And then all of the big titles are coming out for Christmas. So it just kind of gets lost. And I yeah. think that's what was happening with Shadow. And that's why they threw this flash sale. Yep. They were yeah. like, we need, to, we need to push copies. Yeah. With, put it right. on 100% off. Doesn't matter. Take it. For <laughs> <laughs> free. We got, we got a truckload of these Atari cartridges. We need to get rid of them. <laughs> get buried into the desert. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, people were definitely not happy about it. And so they, they took to uh, Steam and uh, just review bombed this game like it was nobody's business. Yeah, I, I think that's childish. Yeah, def 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 petty. definitely, definitely petty. petty. But I mean, yeah. but I, but I can understand, you know, their frustration. It's, it's their prerogative. I yeah, mean, I mean, like you, you can get mad at them for posting the reviews, but it's really their prerogative. 
they, they can dislike the game for whatever childish reason. Right. I, I just... The, the problem I have with it is that and Tomb Raider is is a, the livelihood on Tomb Raider isn't um, dependent on Steam reviews, but <laughs> right. there are many games out there that have that are that suffer because people do these review bombs. Yeah, and a, a, a lot of people just look at the overall score and say hey, score and say this is a bad game where people are bom- review bombing it because the main the main protagonist is a woman, or or Ooh. or something like that. So I don't think that's happened stuff, in a long time, but I mean, if it has. Yeah, it's, we, we, got a long we, way to we, go. T- we talked about Total War. Uh, <laughs> really? It's ha- yeah, and this happened with Battlefield Five. People are, are all over. Oh, yeah, because yeah, of- you're right. That did happen with Battlefield Five. Yeah. So, um, but I, I I don't like that. I I hate it. Um, and I think Steam should do something about it. Steam has done something about it. This has always been a problem, and that's why they segregate the recent score with the overall score. Yeah. And so, if something gets review bombed, those review bombs will almost permanently affect the uh, the overall score. But you can tell whether something got review bombed by whether there's a discrepancy between the recent and overall, and that usually get a very good idea for for whether something like whether whether reviews are justified or not, depending. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it, you know, we we talked about you know the early adoption thing. What would have been nice is if um, was it Idos Montreal is the developers. I thought Crystal Dynamics. No, I think Idos did this one. Idos um, did. But yeah, uh, it it would have been nice, you know, seeing as how it was so close to release, it would have been nice if they would have just gave away some DLC to the people that bought it full price. I don't think I, that that is uh, too hard for them to do. Give away some like in-game assets, some in-game currency, uh, that, simply that, a free DLC, yeah, yeah, that, or, or that something. Makes, I, I, that's a, that's such a bad precedent because because people who decided to want they want the game right away and may have even gone through and beat the story. Uh, because they're upset that it went on sale, that's such a bad president. Because then, when what happens when Battlefield goes on sale, and then when Call of Duty? Because I guarantee you, Call of Duty. I mean, if it goes if it goes on sale within six weeks of release, I mean that's that's well, one you're, thing. You're right that it does set a bad precedence, but there's mm-hmm. ways to there's ways to, to to make the audience happy without actually giving them well, anything. You could just. I, I, I think. I think what that argument is an entitlement argument. I spent money and yeah. I don't feel I should have spent that much money. Yeah, That's yeah, nonsense. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't, if you, everybody knows the cycle of video games. The games will come out for $60 yeah. and at a point in time, it's going to drop in price. Yeah. If you decide you can wait for it to drop in price. Unless it's a Nintendo it. game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, you What's that? Wait. You want Super Mario World? $60, please. <laughs> it's seven years old. <laughs> But uh, yeah, if you, you can just wait, and especially now in the fall, because we all know Black Friday is coming up. There's yeah. games that like Call of Duty. People have brought Call of Duty first day, and on Black Friday, which is barely six weeks away, it's going to be thirty bucks, forty. You no, know, yeah, if it had the same sale, just like a month later at like a Black Friday, people would just be like, oh, yeah, 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 Black Friday Black sale. Friday. It would have yeah. it would have been justified. Exactly. So I, I think it was just bad timing and bad timing and, on and people, rele- on the release and on the. Um, the uh, the price the price drop bad bad timing on both of those, and then people just feeling entitled to you know not spend as much money as they did. Uh-huh. Right. So, so people want stuff for free, and I, that, yeah. that's part of the problem. That's and capitalism, baby. Why well, pay when I can get it cheaper? That's okay. <laughs> but um, from business perspective, there's there's two solutions here, and uh, one is like a hindsight twenty twenty solution, and the other one yeah. is is a solution that they can still take at this point. Um. And I'm speaking strictly from a business perspective, like uh, like uh, Trinell mentioned that uh, you could give something to the early adopters, and I mentioned that you can give them something without actually giving them anything, and that's like, uh, you could just add like a hat, hat DLC. Laura Croft Something. gets a Founder's Edition hat, and then you just you just say that, alright, everybody who got the, who pre-ordered gets this Founder's Edition hat, and it's just a hat, and you, no. you haven't you haven't added any, anything of value, but you... No. No, you, because you that just subsided just, the, the review bombers. And no, just from a just, business perspective, that'll fix that problem. No, because that's just going to perpetrate the problem. So then every time they have a sale, they're going to have to spend. Because yes, it's just a hat, and it's just nothing. But it takes it takes time and You're money right. to develop and and um, post that A little that bit, hat, but it right? does take some. Yeah, yeah. So I, I say no, no. If if you don't want to pay full price for the game, don't buy it day one. Uh, the the hindsight twenty twenty solution would have just been to continue pushing out the game release until after Christmas. That'd be like ideal time to to avoid having having yeah, that I mean, sales massacre yeah, to begin with. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you're because yeah, the about sales that, over. Yeah, yeah. Put put the game out either closer to a, a um 
a accept a accepted sale date. Accepted sale, yeah. yeah. Right. So like a Black Friday sale, Christmas sales. If the game came out November first and it goes on sale on Black Friday, nobody's gonna bat an eye. But because right. this game came out in September and it went on sale here in October, which is normally not a, a standard sales um, timetable or um, time w- window, that's what people had a problem with. And yeah. So o- overall, I think I think the the main problem is just terrible timing. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what IDOS Montreal thought they were doing, releasing a Tomb Raider uh, so close to Red Dead Redemption. Uh, and Spider-Man. And, and, and Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah, we totally forgot about that. That's, that's mm-hmm. a huge one. And mm-hmm. Spider-Man DLC dropped. Uh, you, got call, you got so many games. I mean, they don't call it Broketober for nothing. You got all the games <laughs> yeah, coming Valkyria out. Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles came oh, out. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not, we didn't even bring up, like, you know, like, you know, overseas, uh, and, you know, RPG like that there's a ton of games coming out at this point in time Kiwami 2 came out recently oh cool. Kiwami 2 oh um, man all right I, I just don't think that Tomb Raider and this is for me personally Tomb Raider is not that like hard hitting IP that everybody thinks that it is I, I don't think that <laughs> it is I would say everybody I would say that I don't much thinks that it is I mean I mean Tomb Raider has been has been prominent and it has been it's on been around for a really it's long been time. on you know the Microsoft stage like uh, during their E3 press conferences and stuff like that. So this is definitely a headliner in the eyes of a lot of uh, you know gamers and you know game companies. Uh, but I don't think I don't think this is a headliner. You know, it's it's the third game in the series. Uh, reviews yeah. have been mixed. I, I just yeah, don't I think this was strong enough to compete with everything else that's out there. I, I, so I think I it was bad timing overall from. From the first title to this title, it's been a uh, steady decline for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah. There's been a very short development cycle between. Right. They they made three games in the time that it took me to like get over the first one. You know, like <laughs> I I like if, if there were if, if if the middle one if the second one did not come out and this was the second one that kind of time gap that would be that would feel appropriate and I'd be yeah. like oh yeah maybe I'll check that one out. But yeah, like they just, they just try to cash in fast with the movie. And yeah, we, we've had them out. And I'm burnt we've, out. We've had an a, a Tomb Raider. Um, announcement like every every year just about even if the game come out like every other year every year there's something Tomb Raider going on yeah. and uh, I, I think this is probably and you know from what I've heard from people that I watch this is the weakest one in the series yeah it's been going so down. I think I think down. bad timing overall and I think we talked about this game too long uh, so let's go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead and move on yeah. to the next one. We got a couple more quick hits for you guys, but we I definitely want to know what you all think. So you know what to do down in them comments. Uh, let us know what you think, and it, especially if you own Shadow of the Tomb Raider, let us know your thoughts on the the game itself and whether or not you um, got it during the price drop. What are your thoughts on that? We would love to know. Do you like it? Hate it? Yeah. Is does it stand up to the best one in the series, Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light? Oh yeah, Lord Crawford. Yeah. yeah, that's my jam right there. <laughs> that is there. actually low key the best one of the series. And, but it's not in this series. But in the franchise. In the yeah. franchise. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's move on. Now we're talking about Epic Games. Um yes. and these guys, you know, uh, apart from making billions and billions of dollars, uh there oh, hasn't really been too much to talk about when it comes to Epic, but that all changes today because they have just opened a new office and studio in Australia. Yeah. And New Zealand. Yeah, Australia. I don't even know how is it Australia and New Zealand. New Zealand. I guess they're gonna be sister sister studios. Sister, sister yeah, sister studio, yeah, sister studio. Yeah, I guess. I'm not sure. Well you see they did it in Australia and then New Zealand was like, Well, we need one of everything Australia has. So <laughs> <laughs> they got one, you gotta give them one. Yeah, give me give me epic one epic games, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this this was announced at a conference that was being held in Australia. Um it's what called the Games Connect Asia Pack. Um, the CEO Anthony Reed uh, he announced it and quickly said, "Okay, I quit because I'm going to be working for Epic Games to set up these two studios." Um, so, oh lord, there's there's no word on what's coming out of what they're what these studios are going to be going to be working on if they're going to be doing localization or anything like that. Uh, it's just that they're opening these two new studios in in Australia, New Zealand, and um, told us to keep our eyes open. That's yeah, I mean, if, if anything, they're going to expand on Fortnite because that's like the the money maker right there. Well, just I, just I keep hope, doing Fortnite. <laughs> I hope that's not what they do. I hope they don't put all their eggs. So we've seen that before, right? We see yeah. the studios take all the take all their eggs and put it in one basket, and then that basket got a hole in the bottom, 
I never, yeah, what are you talking good. about? That's never been a problem. All right, so let's make let's give this to Telltale. Let's make a oh, Fortnite God. Telltale game. Oh, let's make God. a Telltale uh, a Fortnite Netflix series. I'm sure this won't get stale. Right. So I, I hope that's not the case. But um, yeah, they're opening the studio in New Zealand. Um, this was a quick hit. Let's move. Yeah, on. that was a quick hit. Let's go ahead and move. <laughs> nah, on. Yeah, that was nothing else to say there. All right. Next up on the list, we have news coming out of Alan Wake. Yeah. And uh, we talked about Alan Wake not that long ago um, because of its... Um... Speaking of Netflix series. <laughs> yeah, the Netflix series. Yeah, they're coming out with a, coming out with a, uh, a series for mm-hmm. Alan Wake. But uh, in the wake of... All... <laughs> no <pun intended. laughs> In the wake of Alan. <laughs> in the wake of all of this, uh, Alan Wake uh, now returns to uh, digital stores uh, because it was taken down uh, due to licensing issues with the game's uh, soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, so so it's back up on the digital. Yeah. Now the music publishers are have awakened to uh, to, to the the digital rights uh, and uh, and agreed to put the games back in stores. Yeah. 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 It's it's interesting because we talked about this when they when they delisted it. This was like yeah. I think it was last year around the same time. Um. They when they were delisting this uh, delisting it, we we found out that it was because they they lost licensing rights to the music. Yeah, um, it's, it's cool that they put it back up. I, I think this has something to do with the fact that they are working on a Netflix series. Yeah, um, and oh, maybe. because this is the only game in the franchise, so it's like it'll be right. dumb for you and to was, make a series out of a game that you can't even buy. Right. <laughs> there was an expansion, I believe. Right? Wasn't it a, a standalone expansion to Alan Wake? I think I, I, I think you're right, but um, I, I'm pretty sure it, it paled in comparison to the actual. To the game, you yeah. think that the reason that they took the game down was because it would have been like. Or it would have been less profitable to continue paying the rights for the for the music, uh, and uh, than to just discontinue selling the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that they they didn't want to pay the amount that they would have had to have paid that wasn't feasible for them. That's I think it, I think really it's sad for far. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's too far. I think they were able to negotiate down the right the licensing rights to the music and the fact that the series is coming out. They want the game around so they can build so so they can feed each other. People yeah. that watch the series go back and play the game. People that play the game but want to go watch the series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, th- this is good news. Uh, usually when you have issues like this, and I remember there was an issue with um, Crazy Taxi and its soundtrack when it was re-released. They had to, like, scrap and, like, replace music that they uh, that they had in that game in order to re-release it. So yeah, it's, it's actually really cool that, um, you know, that we're actually getting this game. Uh, Back on digital stores, I I own this game and we actually played it on uh, one of our horror streamathons. I think it was the first one. It was. It either, actually either kind first... of put us to sleep. It was yeah. a little bit late on in the horror ma- marathon. We we were not feeling it, but yeah, it was a lot of people. I, I, loved it. I played this game. This this game actually got me into uh, Assassin's Creed. I think I may have told the story before, but um, GameStop was having one of their famous buy two get one free game. Yeah. And I brought Alan Wake use, and I brought uh, Dragon Age, and then Ooh. I got I took Assassin's Creed Two free. And All right. I, I didn't like Dragon Age, and I didn't like Alan Wake, so I went to return them. Uh-huh. And I was going to return Assassin's Creed. I said, "Oh no, no, you get to keep that anyway." Get like, it with the okie doke. Okay. <laughs> I, I keep it, and I, I kept Assassin's Creed. I still play Assassin's Creed, and I don't know what happened to Dragon Age or Alan Wake. Nobody, right. knows nobody, nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay, so we have one more quick hit for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into that. And um, Boogie, why don't you go ahead and take us there? Yeah, I just you love these products. Oh, so this, much. this is your auction, favorite company, man. <laughs> there's an auction going on in Japan, and it's the Wiimote prototypes. And apparently, the original Wiimote was being made for the GameCube. Thank you. Yeah. Um, wires and everything. Um, it, it, that's I think that's interesting. Um, it's not unusual or surprising to me because you see this all the time with a lot of these game companies. They'll they'll come out with prototypes and they won't bring it out to the next generation um, for whatever reason. And to be quite honest, I don't think the remote with a ten foot wire is pretty was feasible at all. Yeah, and, which is probably why it didn't come out for the GameCube. Yeah, I would have loved to play my GameCube games with a nunchuck. Woo. No, no, Man. definitely, definitely not. I mean, there there is a handful of games that came out on the Wii and the Wii U that were ruined because of motion controls. The first thing that comes to mind for me is um, the first uh, Donkey Kong. Um, That's exactly what Donkey I was Kong thinking Country. of. Oh yeah, let me make this double jump. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did not like that, uh, and so I would not have liked to see that in my GameCube games. 
uh, at all. Because you know they would have put it. They would have put it in Mario. Um, you would have been playing uh, Luigi's Mansion with motion controls, and it would have just been a bad time. Hey, kids, it's the same GameCube you loved, except worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if time has taught me anything, is that I did not like Wii Oh, controls. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that this was They did not taint the legacy of the GameCube yeah, with that. Yeah, t- oh, yeah, legacy of the GameCube, right. Um, no, the GameCube was a dope console. Yeah. I, I, uh, Man, it's the only I'm, one I was that... being ironic. I love the GameCube, man. There were lots of great games for GameCube. The handle, dude. The handle is what did it for me. <laughs> Being able to carry your GameCube like a lunchbox. Not Smash Melee. Not not Twilight Princess. It was the handle. The handle is what did it for you. Yeah, All right. handle, man. <laughs> um, and, and also that controller. You know, is As funky as it looks, uh, it is the perfect controller for Smash Brothers, which is why we're still using it today. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy that that wasn't the case. Um, but that is going to end it for our quick hits. Uh, and like I was, like I've been mentioning this entire stream, uh, let us know what you guys think. Uh, we would love to hear your comments down in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube.